Grand Rising. Man, Grand Rising to y'all this morning. Grand Rising. <laughs> grand Rising, Grand Rising. Man, y'all hurry up and get up in here. I ain't gonna hold you long this morning because I got somewhere I got to go. I got to make a move, but I had to spend a couple of all oh, Grand Rising. Y'all get on up in here. We ain't gonna be here long. We ain't gonna be here long. Three things I'm going to be about your head real quick. So to all of the melanated people, Grand Rising to you, welcome back. I'm on my morning mental this morning and um, <laughs> and this morning we're going to have to dig into, um, I hate to say this, I hate to get right to the business, but if I had to put a title on this morning, it would be Here Come the Comedy because you know it had to be white people. That's going to be the topic this morning. Here come the comedy right off the top because it had to be white people. White people don't get offended. This is the type of shit you do. And we know you did it because when we hear about it, we be like, that was a white person, right? You ever had the moments, y'all? Come on, get up this morning. Come on in right now. Morning mental right here with yours truly, Grandmaster J. Look, man, I, you know, normally I'm coming with some deep, super spiritual, something to get your day started so you can look the enemy in the face and be like, I ain't studying you. But this morning, we on some comedy this morning. I hope you somewhere where you can crack the fuck up because what I'm going to lay on you, it cracked me up so bad. I, I, <laughs> this morning. That's right. Grand rising to y'all. Hello, family. All the children of the most high. Let's go ahead and give them some praise real quick because there are just some things he didn't put in us. I don't care. There's just some stuff that don't fit. When you try to accuse people of doing certain things, it just it don't fit. When I was a child, my mother used to walk in the room and she would say, I know which one of y'all did it because I know my children. You know, there's just certain things that certain people don't do. Um, okay, let me give you an example. When was the last time y'all in America heard about a police involved shooting of a Chinese man? When was the last time y'all saw a news story on your TV where it said that there was a, there was a, there was a, uh, there was a drive by uh, on a, on a, on a Native American reservation? You know, there's just some things you don't you don't equate to certain groups of people. They just don't do that. And it's very insulting to us as people when people try to accuse black people of doing certain things. That's just not our character. You understand what I'm saying? I know some of this is stereotypical, but a lot of it is true. So this morning on the grand rising time of y'all. I'm just going to be with y'all. I got three things and I got to go because I got to go and I got to hop on an airplane and y'all, y'all are here to rest later. But here's, here's, here's big shout out. Sleep for the rich. What's happening? Here's, here's what we got early. Big shout out. Let me go ahead and do this real quick. All my family on the East coast, all up there, you know, I'm talking about in Northeast, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, Philly. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Delaware, Rhode Island, Vermont, Massachusetts, all my folks up in Boston coming on down through Bridgeport, Connecticut, everybody in the BX, BK, money making Manhattan, the South Bronx, the North Bronx. Big shout out to my man, Busy B. Everybody on the hip hop side of things. I'm just going to shout y'all out real quick. Big shout out to my man, Professor Griff, man. I salute to you. Big shout out, Buster Rhymes. I got to shout out those people that's close to me right now. You know what I'm saying? I had to let it be known. Big shout out, my man. All my people's down in the Southeast. I'm talking about everywhere from the DMV all the way down through the Cacalacs, down to GA, Florida, stand up in the 305. My people's all in Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. I'm still feeling you. All my folks in Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Little Rock, stand up. You know, matter of fact, Texarkana, what you talking about? Kansas City on the map now. I'm about to stand up. I got to shout all my folks out all the way out there on the, on the, on the West Coast. Cali, all the way down Nevada, Phoenix, all back down Vegas. You know, I'm feeling all of y'all too. And then, of course, the places where y'all don't think we have a presence, we actually do. My people's in Denver know what I'm talking about. And then, of course, I, I'm not going to touch the Midwest yet because I got it. I told y'all it's going to be some comedy this morning. While I'm on the <laughs> while I'm on the West Coast, let me go up top. Places that I've been where black folks. Hmm, Y'all different. 
but it's still melanated people. Now I'm talking about uh, the state of Washington, you know, Oregon, you know, all in Portland where they've been acting up, Seattle, you know, coming all the way down through that area. Well, here come the comedy. There's a story coming out of Portland. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to tell it the way that it should have be told. I'm not going to tell it the way that the media, because the media, the media is always looking for drama. They always try to find the, 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 the sadness in the story, but they cracked me up when I heard this story. And I hope y'all ready for this shit. This is some shit that's straight out of the comic book. What the hell is the OSK? It's about the panic. It's lit on my head. Okay. I thought I had one of those pencil moments where the fly, you know, flies attracted to, we ain't gonna talk about that. Anyway, here go what happened. And I'm going to give it to you the way that they should have gave it to you. Morning mental for you. Think about this. Jackson, Mississippi, I see you. Listen, you know it was a white person. Remember, that's our topic. You know it was a white person. So police got a phone call. <laughs> police got a phone call, y'all. Mm -hmm. Call 109, call 109. Be on the lookout for a man running around with a flaming piece of wood. This was the call of somebody was running around with a flaming piece of wood, not a piece of wood like a stick out of the but like some old torch, you know, the, 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 the Roman shit. Somebody running around with a flaming, but who in their right mind is running around with a flaming piece of wood? OK, so there's a dude out here. Be on the lookout. Car 19, car 19, there's a man <laughs> out here running around with a flaming piece. I'm not making this shit up. This really happened. But here come the comedy. Listen to the, the irony and the comedy. There's a man running around with a flaming piece of wood. If the wood is on fire to the point where people can pick up the phone <laughs> and call somebody, I would immediately say, well, ma'am, how big is the piece of wood and how is he managing to keep it on fire? Is it soaked in gasoline? Is it a torch? Or do you mean he has a torch? You mean there's a, <laughs> there's a motherfucker running around with a torch? OK, so the cops got the call. Be on lookout, man with piece of wood. So there's this cop that's out. You know, he going to check it out. You know, he going to never fear. I'm here. I'll go for <laughs> He ain't got no fight where well, he's supposed to have a fire extinguisher. I'm hoping he had a fire extinguisher, but he's on the lookout for this man with the piece of wood. Remember what our topic is. It had to be white people. So the cop is patrolling the neighborhood where the piece of wood, the man with the piece of flaming piece of wood is supposed to be. He didn't have to look far for the man for the flaming piece of wood because the man with the flaming piece of wood found him. Oh, yes, he did. Pulled up, shouted, it, pulled up with his flaming piece of wood. The cop saw the man with the flaming piece of wood. And in his best police voice, he said, drop the piece of wood that's on fire. My man won't try to hear that or nothing else. So he takes the flaming piece of wood and throws it into the police car while the cop is in the car. Now, the car bursts in the flames. <laughs> the cop is in the car right now. Here's where the story gets very interesting. The man threw the piece of wood that's on fire into the police car. The police car catches on fire. The other policeman is still in the car. Other police show up. Now, listen to the story and track the man down and tasered him and took him into custody. They say there might have been a shot fired, but the man wasn't hurt. We don't know who, what they shot at. Maybe they shot the next piece of wood he was about to light up. I don't know. But what I do know is that then the police car that, 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 that he threw the wood in, the car really goes up and the car blows up like in the movies and shit, and all the cops are like, oh, right? Notice he's destroyed the police car, almost killed the police officer, then burnt up at the, the, the state property, and he got away and got tracked down, didn't get shot. The piece of wood is in suspect. They, apparently, he was running back to his stash to get another piece of wood so that he could set some more shit on fire. And they didn't shoot him. They tased him and took him. In, and we don't know the name of the cop whose car got burnt up. 
and who almost got burnt up. They say he has no injuries and we don't know the name of the person with the burning piece of wood. Now, y'all know family help me out if that had been a black man or a black woman that did some shit like that. We would know their name, date of birth, social security number, school they went to. We would have heard from their third grade teacher who thought they was a little stable when they was three. We would have found out all we would know who they mama was, they daddy, what his criminal record was, the fact that he's behind on his child support. We would have found out where his kids went to school. We would have found out that his his granddaddy wasn't even American. Oh, they would have dragged if it was a black person. They be having hearings right now about banning wood in the neighborhood with flammables. From now on, you just can't have gas and wood together. But none of that happened because you know it had to be a white person. Now, when the story comes out, and it will, I want y'all to pay close attention to how they do something that we don't do. Oh, there's a lesson in here for y'all real quick this morning. You see, the one thing that white people have over everybody else, the one thing that y'all keep struggling to achieve when it's being shown to you in your face, the very thing that white people do to try to keep you at odds with each other, arguing with each other, distrusting each other, trying to character assassinate each other, hating on each other, backstabbing on each other, being fearful of each other is they do these things so that you won't realize that they're doing the one thing that they don't want you to do. And they do it in everything they do. I know y'all are not going to want to hear this, but it is the truth. If you want to see a model, look no further than the very people that are oppressing you. White people have made a pact that no matter what happens, they stick together. Whether they right or wrong, they stick together. Even if they got to take one of their own down, they're going to do it in such a way where they stick together. You see, they demonstrate unity in your face every day, which is why they don't want you to be unified. That's why they don't want you to forgive each other. They don't want you to forgive the imperfections. They want you to believe that every one of y'all need to be perfect while they are the most imperfect barbaric people. A man with a piece of fucking wood running around in a city, the police shows up he sets the police car on fire with the cop inside, gets away, gets tracked down by the police. They don't shoot him. They make sure they tase him. Of course, he was on his way to get some more flaming wood. They didn't say nothing about that. They said a shot was fired, but they don't say who got shot at or who did the shooting. Did he shoot back? Did the nigga break out a nine on top of the flames too? Or was he simply trying to get his big lighter? Black people have been shot for holding cell phones, lighters, imaginary weapons that weren't there, knives that materi mysteriously materialized out of nowhere, drugs that just popped up out of the air. They look wrong. They had something in their waistband. They was on the phone. They were sitting in Starbucks. Hell, they was trying to barbecue. Black folks have been shot for just being black. Yet this man did not get shot over reaching for his big lighter. I'm sorry, y'all, but the comedy is in our face. But the irony is also you know, it had to be white folks. I had, when I heard the story, I knew it was white folks. Y'all ever had one of the moments where you hear some crazy shit and you be like, oh, white folks. No white folks did that because they ain't no way no bruh. And then there's some things that happen that we pray that it ain't us. Y'all ever do that? You ever hear something be like, I hope there wasn't a black person that did that. And sometimes we're wrong. But for the most part, you know your peoples. We know our peoples. Black folks know that we ain't, for instance, if you ever hear some crazy stuff like, you know, it was a whole bunch of black folks that was plotting to blow up the building and, and, and do suicide bombing and drive a car. We'd be like, hold up. That ain't our style. 
Yeah, every race has a style. Just like white people, you have a style. You like to lynch people. You've been, you invented it during the Revolutionary War. You know, you brought it back anyway. Y'all been hanging people from trees for years. We talked about that last night. By the way, on a more serious note, if you are looking for part two of the class I taught last night uh, on the Nephilim and the Pyramid of the Apocalypse, uh, may I have your autograph? You've probably seen part one, but part two was so vicious. Part two was so revealing. Part two rubbed so many people the right way because they've been going the wrong way for so long that they destroyed it before we could even save it. So if anybody managed to capture the class from last night, which was the the uh, the um the Nephilim and the Pyramid of the Apocalypse, can I have your autograph? Do you know the one where I broke down that Lucifer means the morning star? You know the one where I broke down of how beautiful Lucifer was and that's why he had to get the boot with all his people. If you have that episode, do your brothers and sisters a favor and post it up on YouTube or something. It is gone. Part one, we still have, but part two, they erased that before I even said goodnight. They were not going to let that word stand. If you saw that last night, but don't worry, y'all know how I get down. The last time they did that to me, what did I do? I just came back and taught the same class over again. You see, it's not the class that you need to stop when you can't stop the source of the class. You see, the anointing that's been placed on me to teach when I black out into those sessions, it ain't me. I let myself be taken over by the most high and let him speak to y'all. And for a man to sit there and who can't handle the truth, for you to pull the plug and erase it before the people get a chance to eat from it, you gonna pay for that. But it doesn't mean that it can't be done again. See, that's the problem with a lot of people who think like men. You think that you have the power to stop that from within, which you cannot contain. You did not invent this world. You can't destroy this world. You can be removed from this world. And then the world will just start all over again. That's why this is not the first. This is not the second. This is not the third. Do your research. This is not the fourth. This is the fifth creation. In other words, we've done all this before and we're going to do it again until we get it right. So you thinking that you stopped the word from going forth last night where we revealed the true nature of who our enemies are, where we showed you the truth in the real scriptures of who Lucifer was, when we showed you the truth of who the Nephilim was, when we showed you the truth of where those descendants went, when we broke down the 12 tribes and who might be from the tribe of Levi, who the priests and the teachers are, when we broke down the 21 gifts last night, you thought you could stop all of that by hitting the delete button. All you're doing is punching your own ticket. So when you have to atone for the things you did here on the earth. You're going to do everything right, but you're going to end up right in front of the most high. And he's going to say, so tell me about the time you hit delete on my lesson for the sheep. And you're going to be sitting there talking about, wow, 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 wow. Don't want to hear all that into the flames. So y'all stop asking me, where is part two? Part two was so vicious that they deleted it before you had, they got rid of it before it got to your table. It was still on its way. The waiter was coming out of the back room. The smoke was still coming off of the plate. And they said, nah, bring that back, cousin. You can't have that one. But let me finish with my comedy. That was the number, that was number two. Here's number three. So by now, I'm, I'm pretty sure y'all seen the video of the, Zamb the Zamboni. Who doesn't know what a Zamboni is? That name alone should tell you. Zamboni. The Zamboni caught on fire. Did y'all see the video of the Zamboni at the skating rink in Rochester, New York? That they was, you know, they bring the Zamboni out to smooth the ice over. They bring out the Zamboni. You see the machine they ride around at the hockey game? They brought out the Zamboni. And the Zamboni was riding around doing his job, and the Zamboni caught on fire. Now, before we go any further, let me tell y'all a little something about the Zamboni. The reason it's called a Zamboni, because people are like, well, what, what the hell is a Zamboni? Why didn't they just call it an ice smoothing machine? Because the Zamboni was invented by an Italian man whose last name was Zamboni. And he wanted to call his company the Paramount Company, but he was in California and there was already a company called Paramount Pictures. So he said, the hell with that. He stuck with his family name and called it the Zamboni machine. Mm -hmm. 
And the Zamboni makes ice. You know, it, it smooths over the ice. It's an ice machine. Y'all hold on a minute. I had to check somebody real quick who lost their goddamn mind up in here. The Zamboni family has sold Zambonis all over the world. Mm -hmm. What I want to tell you with the comedy of this is, and it's really not a, co a comedy, it's the tragedy. If you watch the video, the Zamboni comes in and starts to do its thing. Mm -hmm. It's doing what it does to the ice. There's a man riding on the Zamboni. And all of a sudden, the Zamboni, if you pay attention to the video, begins to leak a red liquid. No, the Zamboni is not bleeding. That red liquid is hydraulic fluid. So it lost its hydraulics, which meant whatever was supposed to be pressured to do whatever it was supposed to do wasn't doing it no more. Some stuff rubbed together that wasn't supposed to rub together. Some shit overheated that wasn't supposed to ever heat up. And before you know it, the Zamboni, which is, which is, um... Uh, what is it? Uh, propane powered. If you know anything about propane, propane is highly explosive. So as the Zamboni burnt up, the man stayed on the Zamboni and turned it around while it burnt up and rolled his ass out of the arena. Zamboni is still on fire. From what I heard, he drove the Zamboni outside where it blew up. Nobody and save the kids. Now, here comes the, the irony. I saw all of these media outlets asking people, are you the one who filmed this? Can I use this? You've seen everybody asking, hey, I'm so-and-so and so from the New York Times. I'm so-and-so and so from the Daily Mail. I'm all of these media outlets. Is this your video? Do, can we, do we have permission to use it? Here's what I thought was ironic. Nobody asked if the driver was okay. Nobody said, because when the Zamboni rolls out of there, you can see it's fully engulfed. You don't see the man anymore. He's on fire. Nobody asked if he was okay. Did he survive? Nobody cared. What is my point? A lot of you are so consumed with thinking that you're reporting something first. A lot of you who have no journalistic training, who have these phones and these cameras, suddenly think that you're reporters. So you're consumed by some of the same demons that reporters are consumed with, and that is the desire to get the word out first. But somewhere along the line, you've lost your compassion for your fellow man. You don't care if people are all right. You just care about the shock value of a video. Let me be honest with you. I know a lot of you only tune in whenever we go live with the NFAC because you want a comfortable, cowardly front row seat to us killing someone so you can show it first. That's the only reason you watch. You don't give a damn about the movement. You don't give a damn about our liberation. You don't give a damn about freeing your people. And that's why a lot of y'all won't even come out and get involved because you don't give a damn about yourself. Plus, on top of that, that requires too much work and it requires some things a lot of you don't have, which is called courage. I want to thank all of you all who have found one way or the other to support the NFAC. If you all don't think you've been slapped in the face, ask yourself this question right here. The Black Panthers marched on the state house in California, and you see they changed every law they could to stop black people from ever doing that again because they recognized that them 20-some-odd brothers who got together signified a threat of something even bigger, and they wanted to make sure that black people could never do that to them again. Yet this year, not one, not two, not three, not four, but five times black people have assembled themselves in numbers far greater with zero incidents and sent a message to white America that if you keep poking the bear, there is something that you're going to unleash 
unleash that is going to do more damage to you than you believe. Even if you overcome us, it will be at a great risk. It will be at a great cost. It will be at a great consequence to yourself. And you black people have sat there and said nothing while they simply ignored what you have done. This is not what we have done. You're black too. It's what we have done. Have they talked about the significance of it? Hell no, because they sticking together. Have they talked about the fear that they feel? Hell no, because they sticking together. Have they talked about the fact that they handing out Nobel Peace Prizes and most influential awards to motherfuckers you never even heard of? Yet every person walking the face of the earth, whether you are a pro-black person like my peoples in the new Black Panther Party and the Hugh and Newton Gun Club, all the way up to rednecks like, you know, the the, the angry this and the, 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 the this person and all these white people that are trying to eat off of what's going on. Yet nobody wants to admit how influential it has been for black people to stand up, unite, arm themselves and say, we're not taking this shit no mo, and you ain't got nothing on us. You're not going to character assassinate us. You're not going to lock nobody up. Even black people yourself have sat there and played that silly ass game. You sound like the white folks. I know some of them got felons. I know they both. Let's lock all of them up. Somebody got a dirty gun. You can't even get on board with your own people to see that the righteous ones, the ones who haven't been caught up in the system yet, those that they can't say you can't own a weapon yet, those that, that don't have a criminal record or have their record expunged, those of us who've done all the honorable things first, we tried that shit and got tired of being slapped in the face by it. You can't fathom that those people got together to make a difference because you're doing the job of the white man. You know, white people sticking together and you sticking with the white people. That's how ununified we are. We are so ununified that we will chase behind other people who are showing you that they're unified against you. If that's not the most backwards, ignorant, slave minded, brainwashed shit I've ever heard in my life. Meanwhile, the Zamboni is on fire and the police car is on fire and the white man that did it is in custody and the brother who drove the Zamboni out of their own fire. Nobody has asked about. That's my morning mental for this morning. The moral of the story is very, very simple. When the fire shows up, pay very close attention to who's bearing the torch. Because depending on who starts the fire is going to determine the response of those who are capable of putting it out. You see, a white man started that fire, I'm pretty sure, in Portland and set the police car on fire. And that's why he's alive today and probably getting counseling. Meanwhile, the bro that drove the Zamboni on fire and saved everybody's lives and didn't make sure no kids got hurt. He don't even get to mention or no one cares if he's OK. So what do you think would happen when black folks start to set it off? Oh, they're going to demify that. But if white folks decide they want to set it off over something as ridiculous as making somebody vote or trying to steal an election. And a lot of you jigaboo niggas out there standing there with them talking about I ain't voting for something. So you ain't voting for nothing. You're trying to fit in and belong into a system that really hates you. You're trying to act like you're, I'm conforming. I'm not doing anything wrong. In other words, you're a yes, a massa. Now take that and light that on fire and see how far that goes. That's the comedy, y'all. I'm sorry. The man... <laughs> Car 19, car 19, be on the lookout for a man with a piece of wood on fire. Hey, man, I got to, ah, the dude showed up. You looking for me, dog? And set the car on fire. Now, can you imagine a dude in the car trying to put the fire out? Car 19, car 19. He's like, what's going on? I found the man with the fire. You found him. What's his location? In my car, motherfucker. He's like, you got a fire stinger? Fire stinger. Ah, I sent back up. And the backup they sent was the cops. Wouldn't it have been, <laughs> wouldn't it have been jacked up if the person at 911 did the same thing to the cops that they do to us? Oh, so you in the car, the car is on fire, All right, sir. Uh, please stay on the line with us, sir. You know, no, the car's on fire. I don't know what I'm going to do. Sir, just calm down. Fire department's on the way. You know, in the fire department, they're like, they think it's some bullshit. So they taking their time. If you see the story, it's go, go Google it. It's on, um, it's on all the news channels, but look at the pictures of the police car.
Utah. I'm sorry. I slid out of my seat and I turned into a scrubbing bubble and went down the drain when I seen that shit. I'm just trying to picture who called the police and what was that call like? 911 was your emergency. Um, yeah, uh, there's a man out here with a piece of wood that's on fire. It's a man out here with a piece of wood that's on fire, huh? <laughs> Ma'am, are y'all having an argument? No, I'm not talking about that. I'm trying to tell you there's a man outside my window and he got a piece of wood and it's on fire. Well, ma'am, what is he doing with the piece of wood that's on fire? He's standing out in the goddamn... You look, 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 just send somebody. It's a man with a piece of wood on fire walking around the neighborhood. Okay. No problem. And then the 911 trying to hold themselves together calls down to the dispatch because they got to call the police folks. You know, they, uh, 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 so and so and so substation. Yes. Look, y'all, I got a call. It's a man with a piece of wood that's on fire. And they saying he walking around. A man with a piece of wood on fire. It, that's, I'm just telling you what the name, they serious. All right, where the man with the piece of wood on fire at? And, you know, rather than take it serious, you know, they call, you know, Car 19. Car 19 is on break eating donuts somewhere, you know, thinking about what black person he can get into and try and get his notch on his belt so that he can, you know, get into the club. And all of a sudden, the call comes in, you know what I'm saying, Car 19, Car 19, what's your location? Oh, I'm over here on the edge of the black neighborhood about to do some racial shit. Well, before you do that, um, look, Golden, can you drive through a certain neighborhood? They said there's a man out there with a piece of wood that's on fire. Well, if the piece of wood is on fire, shouldn't he go to a doctor or something? No, not like that. What's wrong with y'all? Well, you said his wood was on fire. I did not say his wood was on fire. I said, there's a ma look, go over there and check it out and let us know. All right, all right, damn. So he finished his donut, wipe his mouth. Car 22, I'm about to be 10, 17 over a man with his piece of... <laughs> and drove into the neighborhood. Here's the part that got me. Drove into the neighborhood with his windows down. That's the crazy part. If I know there's somebody running around with something that's on fire, I'm coming in with the windows up, trying to scope out the situation. Nah, nah, nobody took it seriously. Y'all ain't feeling the comedy. He drives up. He looking. He don't see nobody. <laughs> All of a sudden, he looking here. This motherfucker come, and he ain't got like a, a stick, like a broomstick. This motherfucker got a two by four, soaked in kerosene with a piece of cloth wrapped around it. It's a torch, and he coming your way. He probably chatting some shit like, "We will not be replaced. We will not be like, oh, one of these motherfuckers. We will not be replaced." And here he come. And because he's white, he didn't just jump out and shoot him talking about, because think about it. If it had been a black man approaching a police car with a stick that's on fire, he never would have made it to the patrol car. My man would have jumped out, dropped the wood, dropped the stick, and they would have lit his ass up. And we would have seen a picture of a bro laying on the ground with bullet holes in him. And they thought, well, why is this stick of fire, right? Because that's what he had. We were in fear of our life. So we had to put him down. But no, he saw a white guy with a piece of wood. Hey, buddy, let's just put the woof. And now all of a sudden, ah, now, now watch this. Now the girl who's back at the desk gets this call back because she's chilling now. She eating her bonbons, doing her nails. And all of a sudden the radio comes like, car 19, car 19. And she's like, car 19, what's the problem? Car on fire, car on fire. My car on fire. What you mean your car on fire? I found the man with the piece of wood. And I got, hey, wait a minute, hold on. Slow down, Joe. You're talking too fast. You found the motherfucker. Yeah, I found him. So that's good police work. No, you don't understand. I felt the motherfucker and he's in my car and the car's on fire. Ah! Now, can you imagine the motherfucker trying to call for backup? Um, any car, any car in the vicinity of car 19. Um, he need assistance. Oh, fire, do something, do something. <laughs> I couldn't have been, I couldn't have been working. They couldn't have had me on the radio. Yo. I'm just keeping it a hundred, which I've been cracking up like a motherfucker. I've been on there talking about. Somebody go check out car 19. He said that he found the man with the, and now his car is on fire. Then you got other officers asking, but damn, how big is the piece of wood that he set a car on fire? What is he dragging across around? What is going on? Y'all not hearing. I knew that it had to be white people. I knew it. I hope that the brother who was driving the Zamboni is okay because nobody asked. You know what I'm saying? That man is a hero because he didn't let that thing sit there and blow up with them people sitting up in that hockey game. But to the cop who found the man with the piece of wood, who threw it in his car, in his car, and to all of the police officers that had to deal with that situation, I just got one question. How did y'all manage not to kill this dude? Because y'all kill us for less. That's my morning mental. Y'all have a good day. 
Car 19, car 19. <laughs> Meanwhile, nobody had a fire extinguisher. Nowhere. Not in the police car. Not on the Zamboni. It was an ice skating rink. And y'all couldn't put the fire out. Shouldn't it be like a ice? Well, it's ice. So they don't think they need a fire suppression system. I don't know. Y'all have a good day. Don't forget, join me tonight on the on the facts over feelings. I see I'm going to have to teach part two all over again, because unless somebody can come up with the recording, y'all know I can't go to my next chapter unless I make sure you're caught up. So if you caught the class last night, don't worry. I'm going to do it again tonight on the part about Lucifer. I'll do part two again. And it's going to be raw and uncut, but this time we may have to do it on two, three platforms at the same time. So stop looking for it because it's not there. Somebody got so offended. Somebody's breakthrough. Somebody's theology got so crushed when I showed them that the true meaning of the Hebrew word doesn't say that he was crucified. It said he was hung. He was suspended. It doesn't say he dragged the cross up the hill to Calvary. It said he dragged a sardon, which is the Hebrew word for a torture device where you are suspended you are hung y'all ain't want to hear that and i know it damaged because you've been walking around with that roman crucifixion device around your neck for so long not realizing you're wearing the ownership of emperor constantine but that broke some people's theology when i told you that the greatest trick that the devil did was not convince you that he didn't exist but that he was some hideous horn-tailed individual when the truth of the matter is scripture tells you that he was beautiful he was the most beautiful being being ever created by the creator. He was so beautiful. He got so full of himself that he thought he could take the place of the one that created him. So him and his whole crew got sent down to the playground that we live in right now. But we're going to talk about that again tonight as we continue our series on the Nephilim and the pyramid of the apocalypse. If you haven't, this is an eight part series and we're in the, we're in the third night now. So here we go. Y'all make sure and I may not do it if what I'm trying to do goes through. I'll let y'all know but otherwise please don't miss it we're gonna finish out this series one way or another because remember he promised you i will never destroy the world again by water the next time it's gonna be the fire and if you don't believe that that's that cop out in portland who <laughs> he like yeah i believe it i believe the fire y'all have a great day love you all shalom <laughs> he said, "Bring the fire, bro. I can't. 